Uh, I'd just like to pray before we start. Uh, Father of God, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time together. Lord, I pray that you would just give me the words that you want me to speak this morning, Lord, to articulate, Father, what's on your heart. And uh, I pray that I do it justice. And I pray that uh, you would just uh, you know, accomplish what you want to this morning. And uh, I just uh, pray, Lord God, that anyone here, Lord, who needs to hear a word from you would hear it this day. Uh, they, they would, their soul would be satisfied with you, Lord God. I thank you and just pray your blessing on this time in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, uh, our theme has always been this year, uh, Love for the House, and part of that today, uh, the title is um, A Safe House. Uh, we want to have a safe house, not just safe house for church, but safe house for home. And um, I really, I'll explain why this was sort of brought to me, but um, uh, it really impacted me um, that we need to protect. We need to protect our house here, the children in the house, and the children at home also. And uh, I think it's a, a critical thing in the time that we're coming into. Uh, so I'll start just by reading a, a verse, John 8:44. He was a murderer from the beginning, talking about Satan. This is Jesus talking about Satan. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Um, I'm going to put up a slide which is rather impacting um, and uh, it's uh, a little, maybe a little bit disturbing, uh, but I hope you bear with me and, and understand the impact. But partly the reason I'm putting this up is because uh, I was praying for what to talk about and um, I was looking for something totally different on the internet with a different subject and this picture came up. Um, I was looking at World War II stats and uh, this is an execution of Jews in Ukraine um, by Nazi uh, troops and uh, it really just impacted me that this, this lady is holding a child and, um, and people are being shot around her and that her intention is just to protect her child. In 1 Peter 5.8, this is one you know a lot. Uh, you've heard many times, be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary, the devil prowls around like a, loring, a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Now, we've heard those scriptures a lot, but we can almost get a bit complacent with them because they, um, you know, it, it's something, oh yes, yeah, the devil is like a roaring lion, but there's a lot of truth behind this that is deadly serious, and, and that sort of is, is the truth of it. This is the nature of our adversary, that he, he will attack and kill innocent people. Um, so yes, the devil is a murderer and a roaring lion. A lion picks off the young. He picks off the young or the helpless. Uh, so he doesn't go for the strong in the flock so quickly. He will try and pick off the weaklings. And so we need to provide a safe house for our children. So I'm going to give some examples, scriptural examples of, of things that relate to this. Um, in Exodus 1, 16, when, when you serve as a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. This is Pharaoh commanding that they would kill the Israelites because they were growing in vast numbers and he was concerned about them overtaking. So... Sometimes we have to disobey governments to obey God and protect our children. And that's what they did. They disobeyed a ruling from the government to, to protect their children. Now, in today's times, and we, we don't perhaps see things so dramatic, but um, there's a, a stealth area where, where the enemy is coming in. And I can think of things at, at, at school and things where there was like, you know, books in their curriculum on evolution, on witches and different things that were, were put to our kids to, to, uh, to read. And we, we really didn't want that to be a part of it. So we said, no, we're not, we're not going to let them do that. And there's other things coming into society now with vilification laws and things where we are potentially going to have to break the law to speak about God. And that's, uh, that's a, a, a tough one. 
but we're going to have to cross that line. We've been a bit blurry lately and there's been a few incidents, but I see that growing and, and becoming a point where we will have to possibly break the law to, to um, honour our faith. Um, if we go to the next slide, just I'd, I'll keep it just on the, on the lady and get rid of the other stuff there so it's <laughs> not so impacted. Um, now, 2 Kings 11, 1 to 2 is another example. Now, when Athalia, the mother of Ahazia, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all, all the royal family. But Jehoshaphat, the son of King, uh, the daughter of, uh, of King Jer Jerum, sister of Aziah, took Joash, the son of Uzziah, and stole him away from the other king's sons who were being put to death. And she put him in a nurse and a nurse in a bedroom. Thus they hid him from Athalia, so that he was not put to death. Now this is a horrible thing, but this, this lady wanted to rule. Her son was killed, so she wanted to rule. And to rule, she had to kill her own grandchildren. So she killed all the grandchildren. Um, but the one that was kept was hidden and protected um, and was put aside in the bedroom with a nurse. And for six years, she hid him while the reign of this terrible, terrible lady kept, uh, was on the throne. So sometimes we have to use our own judgment as to whether we hide our children or take them away from danger uh, and protect them for the long term. This is uh, you know, another example. Things like you know, abuse, sexual, emotional, physical, uh, influence from peers, social and, and um, general media, music. There, there's predators there that are wanting to seek our children. So we need to be aware of these things. Matthew 2.13 Now when they departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Matthew 2.16, just a few verses on. Then Herod, when he saw that he'd been tricked by the wise men, became furious and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and all the region that were two years old and under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. So sometimes when, when we need to hear from God, we need to listen to what he's saying. So that small voice when it says something's inappropriate, something is, is, is not right. We need to listen to that in protecting our children. And if we need to move our children from a relationship, from a place, a situation, we need to act on it. Let's not be slack in this area. It's, it's too important. We need to act for our kids. Job 1.10, uh, this is Satan speaking to God. Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. So we're completely reliant on God's hedge of protection. His hedge of protection around us carries us when we don't even see it. And if that protection is not there, then Satan acts quickly. So we have that protection not, I'm not saying that to, to bring fear. We have that protection. But when that's lifted, he acts quickly. And in Job's case, it was like immediately um, they, uh, when this test happened to Job, the Sabaeans attacked and um, killed many members of the household and servants. Fire came down. Uh, then a, uh, the Chaldeans formed a party and, and ruined the rest of his servants and crops. And then a storm came and wiped out his household, his children. He was basically left alone. Um, so, you know, we do have an enemy that is merciless and has no heart. And we have to be protective. Um, in that, it's interesting with Job, we, we, we can't judge God in this situation. And a lot of people wonder, you know, well, why did God allow that to happen? And... and Certainly, I don't have the answer completely to that, but it's my opinion on this is that we come from, we're very restricted in, in our perception of, where, of, of situations. 
we are geo geographically stuck in one place. So we are fixed here and we cannot see everything. We are fixed in a physical body, not a spiritual body that is able to see things worldwide all at one time, which God can. We also are stuck in a time. We're stuck, you know, 25th of October, 2015. We can only see from this time point. We don't have the benefit that God has of seeing the start and seeing the finish. He sees both ends of it. He knows what's going to happen. He knows what, is, uh, what things have a purpose that we don't see. Our eyes are so narrow in what we're able to see that we really don't have the authority to judge those situations because we're only getting a glimpse. Um, so sometimes when you don't understand something that God is doing, there's much more that's happening, much more that's happening perhaps in the future or things you haven't seen or spiritually. There's a lot there. Um, in Ephesians 2, it says, And you were dead in the trespasses, in the, in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So following the course of this world. So have you changed your course as a Christian? Are, are you, did you change course? Is your family on a different course to the world? Because what this is saying is the course the world is on is, is ruled by a prince of the air that is the devil. So have we changed course? Are we different? Would you know anything different about us if we were Christian or not? And who leads our children? Well, I want to look a little bit at, at the time that we spend with our children and what time is spent, what the time they, is, they spend doing. Two hours a week in Sunday school. So, and it might be a half an hour class and then there's worship and things. There's, and then there's you know, just discussion with friends. And, and it's a great time, absolutely, and it's really important. But it's two hours. It's only two hours. Three hours is, according to UK study, um, three hours of quality family time per week. That's all they get. Three hours of quality family time a week. Six hours of homework, average for a 15-year-old. Six hours of homework. 31 hours in school, and seven of which is break time and play time. So 24 hours in a class. The biggest one of all these, 45 and a half hours a week is spent in front of a screen. Now the screen can be the TV, the iPhone, the iPad, computer, but in front of that screen, 45 and a half hours. So who has the biggest voice in our kids' lives? You know, the, the screen has 15 times more face time than you do with your kids. That's, that's what the stats are saying. And this is a perfect highway uh, for the enemy to pursue. If the enemy is going to be trying to get your children or trying to get into your lives in a negative way, what a perfect way to get in there. Just to go through this 45 hours a week you know, even if it was one hour of that, that was t completely negative, it's, it's, uh, it's an open highway. So it's, it's a, it certainly gets in there in a, in a, in a stealth way. That's to say that's an understatement. And government control for the internet is moving way too slow. There's legislation to control internet usage is archaic. It's happening, they're reacting after things have happened and after damage is done. And we need to act before the damage is too great. The internet is a fantastic place, but it is unbridled. It is unbridled and it needs controls. Did you know that in school holidays, the, the search term porn is searched 47 more times than it is out of school times. 47 more times during school holidays. So, sorry. 47%? Uh, 4,700%, 47 times. Yeah, yeah, so um, 47 times more, that's word is, word is searched for. Um, and uh, uh, Dr. 
Mary Ann Layden, the Director of the Sexual Trauma and, and Psychopathology Program, says there's evidence that the prevalence of pornography in the lives of many children and adolescents is far more significant than most adults realise. The pornography is deforming the healthy sexual development uh, of these young viewers and that, is, and that it is used to exploit children and adolescents. It's good to talk to the kids, but prevention is 100% better. And that's what she's saying in this, this, they're studying this and the, and the effects of it. So how are you currently monitoring the internet usage in your household? Do you, or do you trust that your children are of good character and you know, good common sense and that they can you know, guide themselves? It's a dangerous thing. Gaming is another part of this that is still uh, a huge problem. Violent games is still a major problem. And uh, it's interesting, in August uh, this year, American um, uh, Psychological Association have just come out and said, psychologists have confirmed that playing violent video games is linked to aggressive and callous behavior. And uh, I'm like, wow, where are, you, where are you on that one? That is, we all knew that decades ago. And yet they've just come out and confirmed it now. Where were they in 1999 when the Columbine killers you know, shot 13 people dead and they produced a, a layout of the school on a game called Doom, if you remember that one, um, and, and in God mode went around shooting everyone in this game with violent music and then went out and did the same thing. So <laughs> yeah, to, to come out now in 2015 and say that, oh yeah, we've got it, that's, that's amazing. So we have to be the ones that are on the forefoot, on the forefront in protecting. We can't wait for government and associations and all these things to, to tell us when the damage is done. We've got to be in front of it. APA, this, this same um, psychological association, which is the main one for America, in, in 19, before 1960, they said that homosexuality was a mental condition. In 1960, they changed it and said that it was okay if you were okay about it. In 1975, they said it's completely okay. And then in 2013, they said that pedophilia was a sexual orientation. And uh, then after an uproar, after an uproar over it, they rephrased it and basically said that um, if you have those feelings but don't act on it, um, then it's not a mental condition. So it's pretty horrific, you know, and if you see you know, an organisation like that, you see them change over time and change their truth. They change their truth right through those historical points. Um, do we follow that? Do we change our truth with what society's doing? It doesn't make sense, but this is what's happening. This is what's happening. What's acceptable to people ends up being the moral okay. And so, we, we, as a Christian society, have to hold on to what is truth, what is true truth that, that has always been and always will be. Another one, music. I know this has been talked about, I remember it being talked about decades ago, um, you know, heavy metal music and, you know, play things backwards and you'll hear the devil and all these sorts of things. Um, but the fact is that uh, Satan was involved in music in heaven. Now, whether he was the choir master or, or not, there's a bit of conjecture, but a lot of people believe that. Um, he was certainly in, in some form of music in heaven and led a third of the angels, so quite in, influential, led a third of the angels uh, to earth uh, and fallen angels. And so it's not surprising that music is influenced quite dramatically. <coughs> And the words to a lot of our, the songs that are out there are, are horrific and influential. They've also done lots and lots of studies on this and uh, affecting mood and things like that has also come from the beat of the music too, which is, you know, they're saying regardless of lyrics that it will uh, affect you. If it's a strong beat, it can produce anger and different things, uh, regardless of lyrics, which was interesting. They even compared Christian lyrics of heavy, heavy metal bands with non-Christian lyrics, but the aggression response was the same, which I thought was, was very interesting. So do you monitor your children's music? Do you leave it up to them? Do you 
um, ask them to tell you what they're going to listen to and approve it would be a better way. Uh, even it's easy for kids these days to print out lyrics. Just say if you if you want to listen to this crowd, print out lyrics. I want to see what they're saying. Protect your kids. Don't let it go under. So is it being overprotective doing this? You know, does this sound like we're really coming down too hard and that this is a bit silly and over the top? Well, to me, the risks of being overprotective, um, there is a risk of some damage that you can do by being overprotective, but the risks of being a negligent parent are dramatically outweighing uh, being overprotective. So uh, I do think it's really, really critical for us to uh, protect our children. And if we wait for the government to protect, it will be too late. We're responsible to protect children from the guns that the enemy is pointing at them. He is ruthless, he is the murderer, and he is the liar, and he is the deceiver. Um, and he's try, he tries to pick the weaklings. We are their protectors. We're the protectors here at church for those two hours, but at home, You've got to protect them. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod of, and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. We can't leave them to themselves. We've got to guide them. And it's for, for you, if you don't have a, a, a child or you're a grandparent or you know, even a, an older brother or sister or something like that, you can have a big impact. If there's no relationship there, you can still impact kids in this church. We have some amazing children, get to know them. They are really, really cool kids and, and great hearts and you can guide and influence them in a positive way. Uh, go to the next slide, please. So prevention, and, and, and it's a, a, difficult, a difficult one, but prevention is something that we have to look at. But in the UK, they have had a filter system put onto the whole internet which um, filters stuff before you get it. Uh, and looking into it, uh, I, I looked a bit at the Family, uh, family Voice uh, recommendations and, and a lot of other ones. There's one company in Australia who are doing the same as what this UK based company are doing. Or UK, is, it's overall, you can't avoid it, it's, it's, it's the system. Here, when you choose an internet provider, um, most of them give you very basic tools for filtering. Uh, and it's sort of up to you to then filter it. So as in turn it on, turn it off, that type of thing. Uh, the company WebShield, they filter the content before it gets to your home. So for adults who suffer temptation, uh, it also helps in that area as well because uh, the figures are dramatic as, as far as adult usage of pornography and other things and, and violence and things. So uh, if you stop at getting to the home, you're avoiding the temptation, not having the temptation in front of you all the time. So they use a, a net sweeper technology which basically stores 5 billion um, URLs or website pages and they add 200,000 per day um, onto this that are basically blocked. They're new porn URLs to be blocked daily, 200,000. Um, that will include other things as well. So they filter it before it gets to you. There's other software that, that is um, also good. There's one called NetNanny, uh, Covenant Eyes, um, Ever Accountable. There's a few of these. Uh, the problem with the software-based ones is you've got to install it and kids are very good on the computer. Uh, adults are very good on the computer too and people can get around things. So if it's going to be foolproof, you really want to try and get it before it gets to you. So all of us, all of us are God's children. We're, you know, God sees us the same as that little child that was up there and in some way we've all probably been affected by some of these things over our time. Um, but this is changing very fast now. We're, we're moving at such a rate. It's much faster than, than when I was growing up. And um, so there, there might be areas that you can think of in yourself that you've been affected in the, from this environment. 
I think of the mistakes I made as a father. Um, you know, 21 year old was my first, 24 was my second. I grew up with the kids, you know, and so I was their mate, but I wasn't as good a father as I should have been. Didn't put in some of those things, didn't check, check on, on what they're doing and follow through and guide as strongly as I should have as a father. Um, so friend and father, it, it, you need both, you need both. And I know many, many of us have children that are astray, um, that the prodigals that we pray for pretty much weekly uh, here for them to come home and we can still claim them. And a lot of them have possibly been, caught, uh, been from collateral damage to, due to this sort of thing. But certainly we can pray that those prodigals come in. So don't give up hope for those that you're praying for. As a community, we can protect our children. And, you know, as I say, it is, it is a very different world. I know when I grew up, it was so much easier. It was, it was uh, very simple, you know, come, come home, I'm a 10-speed racer, watch Gilligan's Island, go outside and climb a tree and throw a stone and get the cricket bat out and, until I was tuckered for dinner time. I mean, that, that was just how it was. It was a very, very simple life. Now, goodness me, there's so much going on in a kid's life. They have so many different facets coming into them and a lot of it is coming through these, these devices. And the devices are great, just unbridled. Um, and they're accelerating knowledge in, in an incredible way. But we can, we can use the good part of that, absolutely. So filter what your children learn. Nurture them like they're a seedling and prepare them for what they've got to go into as an adult. Prepare them. You're not just sheltering them off. You're not keeping them away. And I've just got an encouraging psalm to, to finish off with, which I want to read to you. It's from the message. God's your refuge. The high God, your very own home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed amongst lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care. If you only get to know and trust me, call me and I'll answer. Be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you, then throw you a party. I'll give you a long life give you a long drink of salvation. Thank you, Father. So, yeah, I, I hope that, um, that, that this perhaps gives you something to, to think about. I've actually got some brochures from um, WebShield, uh, who, I, I hi if you want to look at others, that's fine. I don't know of another that, that uh, filters before it comes to your house. But I, I am asking you to really check how you're protecting your kids in this area. Um, yeah, you, you, <laughs> I had a picture in my mind driving here, which is a horrible picture, but in a way there's some truth to it. You, you wouldn't nurture a baby and then hold up a pornographic image to it, would you? It's like so horrific. But you know, our kids are babies, they are babies. We don't want them to be exposed to anything like that, or violence or drugs. So we, we can take measures to protect them. So I'm just going to close in prayer. And if, if anyone would like prayer for something that they're going through or something their kids are going through, please come forward and we'll have the prayer team. Father, I just thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this place, this place that's, which is a safe house, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for the families that we have in this place who diligently look after their kids. And Father, I thank you that you are desperate to keep your children pure, that you want a pure child to grow up, Lord God. Father, to give them a good direction, a good step in life, Father, by entering adulthood without all of these hassles, Father, in their life and without being damaged already. I pray, Father, that you would guide us and, and help us to know 
what areas to protect us, protect them. And I pray that you speak with your spirit strongly to the hearts of those parents and grandparents, that they would be able to see those potholes in the road around them, Lord, and be able to deal with them. And I just pray, Father, for uh, the future of the children that, that we have influence over. I pray, Lord God, that they, there is a bright future for them. I claim your word for them, Lord God. Uh, Father, I thank you for the, for the beautiful children that we have and the wonderful futures, the wonderful careers in front of them, Lord God. The wonderful and the families that they're going to bring forward. Father, it's exciting to think about what will be. Now help us to be responsible. Help us to know what to do, Lord. In your precious name, we thank you. Amen.